Good morning, I'm Larry Hofer, owner of Raylar Engineering, and this morning we're going to talk about intake manifolds. There's been a lot of discussion about the different types, the way they flow, the amount of air they move, and how they're built. This is the evolution of all these manifolds for an 8.1 or an 8.8. .8. This is a stock GM intake manifold that when probably 2008 or 9 we started modifying the insides, we cut the insides out, we cut the bottom off, and we made this either for a 78 millimeter throttle body or the 90, depending on what we finished up here. The manifold that was the king of the pile was this sheet metal manifold here. We started making this about 2002, 2003. It had a 14 inch runner. It had airflow that had make 600 horsepower without any trouble at all. And it used a 90 millimeter throttle body, which was a pretty good size jump over the 78. This manifold we made for 10 years, maybe 12, and then it just got where it wasn't affordable to make this anymore. Okay, then we jump to the 8.8 .8 and the current Raylar intake manifold. This manifold was made by PSI for their industrial motors. It uses a 90 millimeter throttle body, as ours does, as this manifold here does too, because that's just a generally available throttle body that'll make 600 horsepower. The difference between this manifold, this manifold, and this manifold is the RPM range determined to have. As you can see, this thing got a runner that goes way out here and all back around. So this makes a really, really long runner. It's also got small cross section. If you look at this area here versus the GM and ours, it's narrow. It was made for low RPM, high velocity airflow. Did a wonderful job. The GM manifold has a taller cross section it's got the 19 inch runner and it's designed for a higher RPM because it was in a truck instead of an industrial motor. And this one here has an even shorter runner. You can see where the runner is actually inside. Like here is where the intake manifold is. This runner is completely outside the intake manifold flange. This one here is completely inside. So we lost a lot of runner length. It's also a lot fatter in this area. So the airflow works. It's got a bigger taper in it. This taper is like 1% per inch, where this one has almost no taper at all. They have some, but not much, because they weren't interested in trying to get a lot of airflow in here and package it into here at higher RPMs. So, early, really good early, PSI and the Raylar intake manifold that we use now. They both have 90 millimeter throttle bodies, so they look similar, but when you look at the design, you can see how much longer this is. And because of the runner cross section, you can also see where the airflow is limited at high RPMs. It just can't move the air over four or 5,000 RPM. You're all done. This one here is probably good till seven. This one here we ran, well, actually in the boat world, we really, the, we didn't run them much over 5,500 RPM because that's where the prop liked to work. So even though this would go higher than 5,500, generally the rev limiter and the cam profile was designed to run these at about 5,500. This does the same thing, but in an automotive application, it runs to 6,000 with no problem. So, we're gonna start with the stock GM manifold. That's this guy here. This has been the mainstay for the last 20 years because it was the only manifold we had to work with. When you cut the bottom out of here and remove this section, it makes an inexpensive modified intake manifold that will work really good. If you want to get the maximum power, you go for a bigger cross-section runner and a shorter runner so that you can tune the power where you want it to be. We cast up a higher volume, higher runner, shorter runner length, higher volume intake manifold for the 8.1 man or for the 8.1 engine. Because this manifold was simply limited to RPM because of the long intake runners. Mm -hmm. This runner in this manifold is 14 inches. This runner in the stock GM manifold is 19 inches. This runner in the 8.1, the 8.8 .8 intake manifold is 24 inches. So they were all designed for different units. This was designed to go in a truck or a boat. It stopped making power about 4,500 RPM. This one here was designed by PSI, and its job in life was for generators and powertrains and wind motors and things like that. 
So it was made to make all its power at about 24 to say 3000 RPM. So they put a longer runner, smaller volume cross section, so it increased the airflow and it would pack the air in at a lower RPM and did a really good job increasing the efficiency at low RPM. The trade-off is it doesn't work well at high RPMs because this basically becomes a restriction. This manifold had good cross section. It worked pretty darn good, but it had a 19 inch runner. It was done about 4,500 RPM. The one we use now has got bigger cross section and even shorter runners. This is a 14 inch runner. So this guy runs up to about 6,500, maybe 7,000 RPM. But the differences between all of these is simply an airflow and how they're designed and what they're supposed to do. Okay, so we wanna show you the difference between the stock 8.1 manifold and the Raylar manifold. The first thing is with the Raylar manifold, all your stock fuel rails used on your truck or your marine application bolt back on. We left room for the cross over here the bolts are the same up here so everything from the stock motor bolts onto this intake manifold the other thing that's of interest if you look in here gm made these runners for a certain velocity and a certain rpm and you can see how much room they left on the board you can see the difference right here where there's no room we've changed all that area into runner volume so that we can get the air into the cylinders this one here nice manifold this one here way better but everything from this manifold simply bolts on here the idle air control motor for the marine application bolts on here just the same if you have to run an egr you can bolt it on here it still works we generally don't we have an intake air temperature sensor here and a map sensor and these are all in the same location so you don't have to change any of your wiring everything on this manifold is designed to be completely interchangeable. You take this one off, put this one on, and it fits in the same space because that was one of the things too, is we couldn't make the manifold any taller than this right here because in a truck or in a Marine where you've got a hatch, you can't have a manifold high like this. But that's the advantage in having this manifold over this one is it flows better, makes more horsepower. This manifold, when we tried this on my truck, my truck's got a 588 in it. We had one of these modified with a 90 millimeter and it did whatever it made horsepower. This one made like 27 horsepower more than the modified stock one. And I'm pretty confident it's because of the shorter runners. The volume inside is about the same, but the airflow through here going into the shorter runners and then into the heads, that's where it's at. Without a good manifold, you can't, it's like running a two barrel. If you, had a, if you had a really good engine and you could run a four barrel, you make X amount of power. If you have to run a manifold that's restricted, it's like going back to a two barrel. And then you limit the amount of airflow to the motor, therefore the amount of power you're gonna make.